Okay, welcome to World Viewer Training Series, the introduction to World Viewer's software structure. So in this video, we're going to go through the basic understanding of World Viewer's layout and menus. Um, it is the first part in our World Viewer series. So welcome. So today we're going to first start by talking about the layout of World Viewer. World Viewer is using a system called EZ3. It is part of our, our Omnity uh, programming. And EZ3 windowing essentially means that you have multiple windows available to you working in World Viewer. And depending on your particular configuration of your Geodome setup, you may have even more screens than I do. So I know I see, or I should be showing three screens right now, uh, which can be a little confusing, but some systems may have as many as 10 or 12 windows, depending on the configuration of the system. So first I'm gonna talk about the world viewer window. Uh, the first window that you'll see here up in my, my left-hand side of the screen is our world viewer window. In this window, we are able to access World Composer, which allows us to build and design uh, content and guest experiences. And we'll dive into that in a future series. Then our second window we see here is called our Flat Surfer. And our Flat Surfer is the one you see up here on the top right. That is going to be our guest user interface. And so on many of your systems, this window is going to be programmed to always be on top and be in full screen as soon as World Viewer opens. Uh, so you wouldn't see it how I have it set up here, but we have it set up so you can see all of my windows as I'm working uh, through this tutorial. And in the bottom right here, you'll see a 30510 projector. Uh, this is particularly a, a configuration for a panorama that is using a 30510 all-in-one OmniFocus projection kiosk. And so uh, this particular window would be drug over to the projection monitor um, and then expand it into full screen, and that would project onto whatever uh, open dome surface you are using. And so uh, that is the current structure of this. You could have additional projectors. If you have a multi-projector blended solution, you would have a pro or one of these windows for every projector uh, that you have. And when working with these windows, there's a couple of different ways to interact with them. Uh, we want everything to be in full screen when we are using this as a, as a guest driven experience. And we can do that by making our user interface full screen. And there's two ways to do that. The first way is by using the left control button and enter. And when you do that, you'll see that the user interface has come to a full screen. If I do left control and enter again, it exits full screen. That this is the same for the 30510 projection system. Once I drag that window to wherever that window would belong, whichever display I need it on, I would then use left control and enter, and that would bring it into full screen. So I'm going to go ahead and decrease that again. There's another way that you can interact with the windows as well. And down at the bottom on your taskbar, you'll see that there is two uh, world viewer icons. The first one is your world viewer window. Again, this is also going to house your world composer. And then you're going to have a second one. And this is going to be where all of your additional windows as part of your easy three system are going to be. And in this, you'll see you have your projector and the flat surfer, because those are the additional uh, windows that I have. And below them, when I hover over them, you'll see that there's multiple little active buttons here. And this first button is full screen. Uh, so this would be just like hitting control enter to set the window to full screen. And so since I'm hovered over the flat surfer, if I press that, you'll see that the flat surfer has gone to full screen. If I come back and hit that same button, it will minimize that window uh, again, okay? Then the second button that we have is uh, to set that window to always be on top. Many times your uh, user interface window is going to be set by default by us to always be on top. Uh, if you are using perhaps a third party application or something of that nature, uh, which we'll dive into in some future series, you may need to set something as being always on top so that you can control what happens when different applications are running in the background. So that is most likely when you would use that type of a feature. 
And all the way to the right, we have a button that is our reset to primary monitor. Uh, every once in a while, if you perhaps had a power outage or something, and the projector was shut down prior to the or world viewer closing, it can throw the windows off because if there's no projector for this projection window to be on, of course, it is going to have to default to some other monitor. And when you open up your system the next time, all of a sudden you can't find that projection window, you would hover over this icon and come all the way to the right and it would say reset to primary monitor. So you can see that the flat surfer kind of jumped to the center of this monitor. That is because I reset it to the primary monitor and so it was bringing it back. And of course the window that I am recording on today is my primary monitor. So uh, that is why it bounced into the middle of the window it was already on. So that would be how you could find a window and then re-expand it into a full screen setup. Um, now I wanna talk a little bit about the menus, okay? Uh, and we, when we're working with menus, we are going to work on uh, the, the world viewer window, which is also gonna house the world composer. And bear with me, I accidentally hit the play button. I'm just gonna go ahead and stop that for a moment. Uh, by the way, the composition that I'm using to walk through this is actually our world viewer video. So if you've been on our website and visited uh, the world viewer section of our site and seen the video that plays, that video was truly designed and built in WorldViewer and completely run and recorded simultaneously without having to use any editing software. So uh, that kind of speaks to the volume of the power of WorldViewer. Uh, as, as much as being a, a user-driven system, it can also be uh, time-controlled. And so that's how this particular uh, setup is. So the first window that we're gonna talk about today is gonna be our global settings window. You can access this by hitting the escape button. So when you are have your world viewer window active and hit escape, you will bring up your global settings window. Here is where you can load compositions. So if you had another composition you wanted to look at, you could load it here. Additionally, you could import packages. Uh, this may become uh, something that you wanna do when you actually visit our website. And uh, we have a section on here called our world viewer stories. And so uh, if you download one of these world viewer stories, quite simply, uh, you would just import that package right into your world viewer system, like you can see here. Once you're creating content, which is what we absolutely love to see all of you doing in world viewer is sharing your particular stories. Uh, we encourage you to share your content via that web store uh, on our website, and you would you would package that soft or the uh, content using this ex export package, which we'll get into in a future series uh, when we teach how to export content for our web store. And then, of course, the quit button would exit World Viewer. I'm not going to demonstrate that because I don't want to wait for this composition to reload. Below File, we have our Settings portion. And so I wanna remind you we're in our Global Settings window and our Global Settings menu. So the changes that you make under these settings are going to make changes globally on the system, okay? Input is where you could uh, change the sensitivity of your mouse or touch screen. You could invert your mouse, all right? Uh, these other settings are gonna be for a little bit more complex setups. I'm not gonna dive into those today. If you are by chance using a joystick controller, perhaps you are a planetarium uh, or you are doing a docent uh, led presentation inside of your system and you wanna be able to stand back from the audience, you are able to use a joystick controller, but you just need to make sure you're designing your content around that. Uh, when you are doing that, you could adjust those settings here. Then of course, after input, we have our display settings. Uh, Illuminati is going to be sure to have this all set for you upon delivery. Uh, but this is where we set your default configuration for Omniti, which we talked a little bit about uh, in our windowing system. So this is where we would select our default Omniti configuration. Today, I am using the 41, 245, 305, 10, which is our four and a half meter Geodome panorama with a 30510 projection kiosk. Um, and so I, I could change that default Omniti configuration 
here. Uh, these additional settings are going to have a lot to do with more complex uh, uh, builds. And so we will dive into that in future systems. And even some of them, we may have to do a one-on-one -on -one support to make sure uh, that we can truly help you understand what the impact that would have on your composition. We also offer uh, the, some VR add-ons. I'm not going to talk about those today, but the settings for that would be in here. Uh, additionally, we have some abilities to use Science on a Sphere playlists. And actually, you can download Science on a Sphere browser to browse the content available from Science on a Sphere on our web asset store. And here is where we're designating the different drive letters that could possibly be hosting that content. And so you're probably never going to interact with this. We would have that set for you upon delivery. Composition settings. This is truly where you'll likely spend most of your time uh, at, inside the global settings menu is setting your default composition. And so here you can choose how to do that uh, by set, selecting default composition, choose the composition you want to automatically open whenever you do open world viewer, and that can be set here. Additionally, there's some settings here for your throttling panel bubble flyouts. Um, this is going to be set by Illuminati at default as six. I recommend keeping it there. It's a really good speed. You want to make sure you're controlling your speed when you're changing the content really quickly on a, on a large immersive screen like that because you don't want to make anyone nauseous. Um, and then here we have some, some settings for YouTube quality and thumbnail resolution. Quite honestly, you'll likely never actually interact with those particular settings. You may, however, want to enable this while playing beta event. Um, I suggest doing so if you're going to use any scrubbing. And what I mean by scrubbing is using image sequences and being able to go back and forth and kind of use your hand to adjust those playback settings. And we'll dive into that in a future uh, series as well. But in order to use that GUI slider template, you must have that activated. And then we have our network settings. This is going to be if you wanted to control world viewer using any network pages. Um, likely not something we're going to do in a basic setup. So we're not going to get into that too much. And then, of course, we have our about after settings. About is just going to tell you uh, what version you are running. Uh, so here I can see I'm running 2.1.0.520. You could also scroll down and see your world viewer license key. You're almost never going to need that. We have that uh, on record as well. But if for some reason you ever needed to reference it, that is it there. Um, that is the basics of our global settings menu. So to exit that, I'm going to go ahead and hit the escape button, and that will bring me out. The next what, uh, menu that I would like to talk about is going to be our composer menu. And this is going to be the meat and potatoes of what we're doing uh, throughout these tutorials is interacting inside of this composer. But to access composer, it, you, the button you would use is the tab button. So when I hit tab, I exit out. When I hit tab, I enter into composer. If I just wanted to peek at something behind, there's a little peek button here when I press it. I can see behind when I let go, it pulls back out. So I'm going to actually expand this window to take up our full screen since we're going to be primarily talking inside of this. And I want you to be able to see more of what I'm discussing. So now that we are inside World Composer, first on the top left, you have your uh, navigation buttons. And that is going to be your file where you can start a new composition, load a composition, save your composition, and enter your metadata, which we'll talk about in our exporting packages for uh, sharing uh, series. But this is going to be necessary if you're going to upload it to our web store. And then, of course, quit. And below at the bottom, you can see the version of WorldViewer you're using. And again, I am currently using version 520. So uh, I can click. I can click anywhere outside of, of there to, to get out of that menu. The edit menu will let you undo the composition. It'll also take you to the preferences or global settings menu. So if you wanted to enter that one, you could just use that button as well. So I'm going to click escape to get out of there and tab to get back into our composer menu. 
I want to talk about the layout that you're seeing here just a little bit, okay? And so on the left-hand part of the screen, this is actually our structure layout. So here you can see we have tracks, which would be very similar to like layers in an Adobe program. And the columns that we're seeing here, these are chapters. And chapters are going to be how you separate out the content experiences. And so, uh, you know, if you're gonna play a video that might happen in chapter one, and you might go to an image sequence in chapter two, and we'll kind of dive into that a little bit as we, uh, as we build inside of the next video in this series, which is going to be uh, creating a composition or a basic composition rather. So we have chapters as columns, we have tracks as rows, and what the tracks are really going to be is the layering structure of your content. Because WorldViewer is essentially a media mashup, mashup tool, you are able to layer the content. And so you might have a space or a sky map in the background, and you want an earth overlay to lay on top of that. And you might even have a picture in picture that you want to play on top of your earth overlay. So uh, the layering structure is going to be just like that of most of the prog uh, design programs that you're familiar with. The layer furthest to the bottom is going to be the furthest back and the layer closest to the top is going to overlay everything below it. Um, I like to build my compositions with my GUI layers um, on the top because that way it overlays everything that could be playing on the immersive screen or the open dome screen rather. So uh, we'll talk a little bit about that when we are actually building. So inside the chapters, if you click on a chapter, okay, it brings up the chapter properties to the right, okay? Here I could rename a chapter, all right? I can put some scripting in a chapter. You can see a lot of scripting, which we'll go over in a future tutorial, how to script, okay? And uh, I could also scroll down on this and I can do, adjust some settings when we're entering and exiting panel bubbles, which we'll talk a little bit about in our basic creating a composition video, uh, the next in the series. And so uh, here is your chapter properties. I do want to show these two diamonds, okay? The diamonds actually allow me to resize the properties window. Additionally, I can resize my composer window, okay, so that I can see more material. And uh, I tend to like to work with more of a square uh, setup here, and, and so I can see more chapters. And then I'll drag my properties out to fill about one third of the screen. I like that because then I can see my scripting and, and it works a little bit well, or it works a little bit better for me, but you do whatever's best for you. Once we are in a chapter, these are called cells. So if I click on these, we call these cells. And when you click on a cell on the right, you can see all the different clips that are in that cell because a cell can have more than one clip. When you clip on, click, click on a clip, you are able to see that clip properties. So now I can see the name of this clip is here. I have playback controls. I can change the file here. I can make adjustments to the appearance. I can set this to do particular things uh, on a timeline event. And I could also do some basic scripting here to interact with that clip. I'm not gonna dive too much into these properties because you'll learn them as we go through the training series, okay? Um, and from that, uh, I just wanna kind of show how we would load a clip, which uh, we'll see in our tutorial series. But to load a clip, clip, I would just right click and then hit load new clip. And here is where I'm gonna dive into uh, what types of files we're using and how to make them render on the system, which we'll learn in basic creating a composition. Um, that is all we have for our introduction to WorldViewer's structure.